And again, I'm going to ask this strictly as somebody looking to totally understand your industry, because there's somebody who's watching this who may not understand that they're looking to get into that business or they're just fascinated like me. Number one, number one, why would anybody buy a used pair of sneak? This is something you have to put on your body. Like, why, why would someone even think to buy a used pair of sneakers? And number two, are sneakers that were made for someone that has uh, been deceased, do they go up in value? So you just spoke about MF Doom. I'm thinking Kobe Bryant. How how does the fact that, uh, you know, somebody who this sneaker was made for no longer here, how does that affect value? Oh, it, it skyrockets, man. That's what I was saying. Like before he passed away, the shoe was worth about six to seven hundred dollars, maybe eight hundred dollars. Now it's worth thousands after he passed away. Look, Kobe, when his sneaker died, it was disgusting. People were reselling his sneaker. You know, some of the stuff was worth a lot, thousands. Some of the stuff was worth two, three hundred dollars. You had a two to three hundred dollar sneaker that already released that was on the resale market skyrocketing to two thousand dollars like every shoe was two three thousand dollars five thousand dollars just because the man died they, they were trying to capitalize on this man's death this legend's death mind you which to me is is nasty i mean i'm in i'm in this not for the resale i love the fashion of it you know that's my whole thing i like the freshness of it all um but there's a whole business to it i know about the business because i have my own show on the sneaker addict on youtube but the whole thing is is that People, people don't are, are heartless. If there's a dollar, they don't care how they get it. You know, like me, I, I can never put my my sneakers up on the auction the day after Kobe dies and try to cash out on sneakers, like because of a man's death. Like to me, that's that's terrible. And it, and karma's karma's a real thing too. But this sneaker game is brutal, bro. People are heartless in this. Okay, so so answer my first question because oh, the used I, shoes. The yeah, shoes. I can't see myself. I don't. I don't get it either. I don't. I would never put on a pair of shoes that someone else wore, but some people don't give a give. They don't care because of the fact that they're so sought after. They'll look at the shoe and they'll say, oh, "Okay, well, this shoe is very near dead stock." That's a term. They're, dead stock means it's brand brand new. No foot's been in it. It's brand new. Very near dead stock. That means like it's been worn a couple of times. Some people wear a shoe that's been worn like crazy. It just all depends on the kind of person you are. Me, it's newer. I, I'm good. I'm wearing some someone else's shoe. That's kind of weird to me, but hey. Yeah, it's very weird. How about, yeah. I heard you mention earlier, samples. Explain to us what is samples. And, you know, I, I think I have an idea. I think mm. it's self-explanatory, but just in case I'm not understanding the terminology and are samples worth more? Like, what is oh, yeah. the value of samples? Sample, well, there's all different kinds of samples. You got a production sample, um, which basically is when it comes back from, produ- what, perfect example. This is a production sample right here. This is my shoe. I got a sneaker deal off YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, I was telling you off camera. Uh, I got I got my own sneaker to release about three, four years ago, sold out in an hour. I think less than an hour, but we'll say an hour. Through who? Through Saucony. This, this was my actually actual shoe I put together with Saucony. And, and, and I'm asking you because some people are going to be listening to this on audio. Okay, yeah. So this is a Saucony Grid 9000 by DJ D-E-L-Z, DJ Dells. And um, this has the, the tag on it. So when we put together this, I went to their headquarters. We picked out all the materials. They mail, they they go f- for the production sample. They mail it back. I get the shoe. I look at it. And then I'll say, okay, we got to change this, change that, remove that. But basically like someone sends a demo with music, you know, you guys listen to a rough cut and you say, okay, we got to, you got to change that bar. You got to tweak the, tweak the beat too. We got to add something to it. It's the same thing when the shoe comes in, we got to check it out. I see something I don't like. Now, this shoe right here may have something different to it that, that the original one, the one that actually comes out, the product that comes out. So this is going to be unique because there's not many made. There's only three of these made the way this is as a production sample. So this is very valuable because there's only three of them in the world. 
sometimes brands make sneakers, they scrap them. They're like, you know what? We're not going to put these out. We're just, we're just going to scrap them. So what happens to those sneakers? They get obtained by some of us. And then that's big money right there. Cause these are shoes that there may be five in the world of six in the world of samples. I got Kanye West S dot Carter shoes, never released samples, you know, big bro, Jay Z designed by Kanye before all them, them, them deals and all that worth some paper. I got like, you know, the sample game is crazy. You get your hands on the samples. It's a lot of money in that, depending on what sample it is. Okay. So let, you know, it leads me to another question. When I was coming up, when you thought of sneakers, you thought of athletes, right? Sneakers that were worth anything, sneakers that we all wanted to wear. You're thinking Jordans uh, or even going back um, further than that, the the, the converse um, mm-hmm. with magic. Stan Smith. Uh, yeah. The Stan Smiths. Yeah. He, and I remember he, he, somewhere in the 90s, and I believe it was Reebok. Reebok kind of shifted the industry. And I think I'm, you know, stating this correctly because it went more lifestyle. So they started to bring in uh, people who weren't athletes. Yeah. People Jay-Z, who were- Jay-Z, Jay-Z, G-Unit. Remember they had the G-Unit Absolutely. sneakers? That was through Reebok too. So does it matter, you know, in terms of uh, value these days? Oh, yeah. If it's an artist, if it is, or, or is our sneakers worth more when they're attached to uh, athletes still, and then maybe artists or, or celebrities second, or the, is it just how big the, the, the person who the sneakers are named after or made for, does that determine the value? Well, the difference between then and now is then they were just giving these guys their own shoe. You know, like the S. Dot Carter, the the G Unit sneaker. Now they're attaching the athlete to the to the artist. So you have an Air Jordan Travis Scott, you have an Air Jordan Drake. So now you got the power of Michael Jordan's Jumpman, and then you got the power of Drake. You have the power of Travis Scott, who's a heavy influencer. Everyone's watching what Travis Scott's doing next. So he puts out a shoe, it's selling out instantly, and then it's reselling for a thousand bucks or, or more, which is which the shoe retails for about 250. It's a nice flip right there, especially if you get a couple of pairs of those. So yeah, that's a, that's an amazing flip. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.